uh, speaker, according to the program, Reverend Dr. Roman Fichas, director of, of the Institute of Ecumenical Studies <coughs> at the Ukrainian Catholic Universities. So his um, presentation will focus on the topic dialogue in a time of war, new challenges and perspectives. So, Reverend Fichas, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, uh, Dimitrios, for the presentation. And uh, first of all, I would like to thank those who are on the front back in Ukraine, uh, to our soldiers, who often at the cost of their lives protect uh, Ukrainian people from brutal Russian aggression, which is uh, currently happening in Ukraine. And because due to their sacrifice, uh, we as, a, as a Ukrainian delegation, we are privileged to be here and share our reflections. Uh, my theme is a dialogue in, in a time of war, new challenges and perspectives. Uh, the ecumenical vision of Eastern Catholics is inspired by important initiatives and documents of the Apostolic See. However, being rooted in a specific culture of relations within the local churches and having its own connection with society on the local level, this Ukrainian vision has a clear contextual character. In my presentation, I will briefly review the main ecumenical initiatives of Ukrainian Eastern Catholics before the start of the full-scale uh, war of Russia against Ukraine, in order you could understand uh, the main specific of their vision of uh, interconfessional relations. I will also analyze the current ecumenical situations that have been developed during the wartime to see how the Ukrainian churches are involved in important work of the society's resilience and healing the war's traumas. How the issue of war and peace is articulated in a, in a new way in the Ukrainian religious milieu, <coughs> and how this discussion started to take on a broader and global character, which accordingly leads to the demands of a new culture of dialogue. At the same time, we will analyze the challenges and new trends that prevent the full realization of the ecumenical potential of Ukrainian Christians. In the conclusion, I will briefly summarize the promising directions which should be elaborated for development of the Catholic Orthodox cooperation in Ukraine. So first of all, about the religious context in Ukraine uh, before full-scale war. As you Already, uh, already no religious life in Ukraine began to flourish uh, uh, only after the collapse of the USSR uh, and Ukrainian independence in 1991. Ecumenical life since that time has been full of various challenges and achievements. Ukrainian Christianity, for example, in contrast to Russia, where the Russian Orthodox Church had a dominant position in the state, instead in Ukraine, uh, it was uh, characterized by the absence of one monopolistic Christian community that could dictate terms to other denominations or to have specific uh, spe special privileges uh, from the state. Such diversity created a certain tension and uh, competition between denominations, but at the same time, it created the basis for dialogicity and openness of Ukrainian Christianity. In Ukraine from the beginning of the 20s, several Orthodox churches were formed at once, but they, uh, unfortunately they didn't have communion with each other. Ukrainian Orthodox Church of Moscow Patriarchate, Ukrainian Orthodox Church of Kyiv Patriarchate, and Ukrainian Autocephalic Orthodox Church. The Catholic Church was represented by the Eastern Catholics, that is the Ukrainian Greek Catholic Church, and the Greek Catholic Eparchy of Mukachevo and the Roman Catholic Church in Ukraine, <coughs> the Latin Rite. The Protestant and the Protestant communities, usually of the Baptist and Evangelical orientation. Such diversity during the first five years of independence became a source of interreligious conflicts and tensions. However, after a phrase of mistrust and sometimes enmity caused by the conflicts over the uh, distribution of churches and church property, uh, interdominational relations move to a period of peaceful coexistence. Initiatives of reconciliation, dialogue, and cooperation were emerging. emerging. Uh, interconfessional prayers were held, and various academic theological meetings were organized between the representatives of Ukrainian churches. 
Churches of Ukraine put forward joint legislative and educational proposals acting together within the framework of the old Ukrainian Council of Churches and Religious Organizations, which was created in 1996. This institution represents right now 95% of religious communities presented in the country. Meeting between the leaders of the Ukrainian churches have become a commonplace. However, ecumenism in the Ukrainian state remain hostage to some factors. Orthodox Christians in Ukraine were cut off from the main ecumenical processes for many decades. The uh, Ukrainian Orthodox Church of Moscow Patriarchate, as part of the Russian Orthodox Church, has never been a separate member in ecumenical uh, dialogues or meetings outside of Ukraine because it has always been a part of the Russian Orthodox Church delegation. In the rock itself, the institute towards the, uh, the attitude towards the ecumenical movement was often and still remains a twofold. Outwardly, the rock is full member of the World Council of Churches. Its leaders participate in international ecumenical meetings. Joint statements with other denominations are accepted. But in the internal environment, the attitude towards ecumenism is completely different. The majority of the clergy and the faithful in general are brought up in the spirit of isol uh, isolationism and prejudices, prejudiced attitude towards all non-Orthodox. This dual policy goes back to the Soviet Union uh, and the Ukrainian Orthodox Church's relations with the other Ukrainian Orthodox denomination are burdened with negativity. Uh, there were accusations of schism against uh, the, this church uh, the sacraments, including Baptists, uh, were not rec have been not recognized, and uh, all <coughs> other stuff. Uh, to Ukrainian Church of Kiev Patriarchate and Autocephalic Church, which later formed the skeleton of the Orthodox Church of Ukraine created after Thomas, not having recognition from other world Orthodox, church Orthodox churches, could not enter the arena of international ecumenical dialogue. Most of the Protestant communities of Ukraine belong to the second way of Protestantism. There are Baptists, Pentecostals, Adventists, uh, uh, who are characterized by low ecumenical activity in contrast to the first wave, for example, Lutherans and Calvinists. The atmosphere of uh, persecution during the Soviet Union pushed them to confessional isolationism, and only in the 2000s, did they begin to form inter-Protestant inter representative uh, structures and uh, reach all uh, Ukrainian level. Uh, what is uh, about the ecumenical role of the Eastern Catholics in Ukraine, especially the role of the Ukrainian Greek Catholic Church? Uh, UGCC, uh, compared to other denominations of Ukraine, have certain ecumenical achievements, thought, in its environment, the attitude towards ecumenism is heterogeneous, sometimes with certain reservations. The negative experience of church property conflicts during the period of coming out of the underground has not yet been forgotten. Among the, uh, the older generation of priests, uh, the memory of Ostpolitik is still alive when in the 60s uh, the Vatican did not mention the pr uh, persecution of Ukrainian Catholics in the USSR for the sake to preserve the dialogue with the rock. Nevertheless, uh, UGCC uh, have been played the leading role among other Ukrainian denominations engaging into different ecumenical initiatives. This pioneer role in the ecumen ecumenical process has its own objective causes. Back in the days of the Soviet Union, when the Ukrainian denominations tried to survive in the brutal conditions of atheistic Soviet propaganda and persecution, a part of uh, the church uh, in exile uh, was comforted uh, by freedom and could freely benefit from the achievements of the modern ecumenical movement. Thus, after the 90s, Greek Catholics were able to continue their activities in, in, in a new circumstances in Ukraine and around. Uh, with the rapid development of religious life, the establishment of sem seminaries and other educational institutions, Ukrainian Eastern Catholics could participate in international ecumenical congresses and meetings. Many graduates of seminaries studied abroad. Many teachers, professors from outside uh, Ukraine taught in our seminaries. 
All this made it possible to make serious ecumenical progress even at a time when the Orthodox brothers were not ready for this. We can only briefly summarize some of uh, ecumenical initiatives uh, realized by the, the, head of the, uh, uh, the heads of the church. Uh, for example, the pastoral letter of his beatitude, Miroslav Ivan Lubachevsky, on the unity of the holy churches back in 1994 at a time of severe interconfessional confrontations. It may be for decades, uh, for 10 years, this, it was the only ecumenical uh, paper of such level in different Christian denominations within Ukraine. Another pastoral letter of his beatitude, <coughs> Lubomir Huzar, one people of God on the Kievan hills uh, in 2004, where he raised important issues of interconfessional dialogue with Orthodox brothers, in particular, the issue of common Kievan tradition, the need of forgiveness and reconciliation, a call from erasing exclusivism to contemporary complementarity, from the church's position of subordination to public service, from ecumenism of ultimatums to partnership dialogue, from confessional rival, rivalry to the primacy of love. All this could be the main principles on which the future vision of the Kievan church, his state, could be built. Another letter of uh, our current uh, uh, Patriarch uh, Sviatoslav Shevchuk on the occasion of the century of the uh, renewal of unity of the Ukrainian nation and the state uh, called our Saint Sophia where he talks about the Sophian, Sophian basis of the civilization of Kievan Christianity. Uh, in the 90s, Ukrainian Greek Catholics created the Lviv Theological Academy, which later became Ukrainian Catholic University, and our institution was formed uh, within this uh, university, which deals with the issue of Christian unity. Uh, UKU has become a place of constant meeting of representatives of various denominations and also their, uh, their creative reflection on today's challenges. The development of research on the common Kievan tradition embodied in the publishing projects of Kiev Christianity, which was launched in 2013 in cooperation with the humanitarian and philosophical and theological faculties of the Ukrainian Catholic University. Aiming to research the theological, canonical, and socio-cultural sources of transmission of Kiev metropolitanate in the uh, broader comparative context of the universal Christian uh, traditions of Byzantine, the Latin West, and the Eastern Orthodox communities. During 10 years of work, Ukrainian uh, scientists collected materials for 30 volumes, which covered the period from the Middle Ages to the early modern era. UGCC, with the help of the international partners, developed the largest social aid organization in the country, called Caritas <coughs> Ukraine, which operates thousand, uh, throughout, the, uh, throughout the free territory of the state. Uh, it coordinates <coughs> work of, uh, uh, the coordinated work of Caritas has become a huge help for the war-torn Ukrainian society, where thousands of people receive professional help and comfort, uh, comfort every day. Uh, the, uh, this church uh, is the only church in Ukraine that uh, has developed its ecumenical position, and regularly, every five years, uh, it updates it. At the same time, asserting through its superiors that the issue of the Christian unity is one of the priorities uh, in this church. Representatives of the UGCC uh, constantly participate in ecumenical events, academic conferences, meetings, and joint prayers. However, intra-Orthodox confrontation, antagonism, and religious exclusiv exclu exclusivity, efforts of some churches to be close to the authorities <coughs> in order to use the influence or, and resources political and ideological influence from outside of Ukraine on religious consciousness became serious obstacles that did not allow to launch the process of mutual recognition of Baptists, for example, between Ukrainian churches, or to start a serious theological dialogue. Sometimes the churches are less mature than the civil society, which we clearly saw in the case of adoption of the new calendar reform in Ukraine. So our Greek Catholic Church adopted the calendar separately from uh, our Orthodox uh, uh, churches, church. 
development of the situation. The situation developed after 2013 and 14, after Maidan and the revolution of dignity, when uh, our churches understand that we have to be more open to society than to, to the state. Nevertheless, religious fundamentalism and exclusivism, which was characteristic for some churches in Ukraine, was especially manifested in the narratives of the Ukrainian Orthodox Church of Moscow Patriarchate. <coughs> Refusal to recognize the newly created Orthodox Confession, a reluctance to have a sincere dialogue that would lead to unity, was the main line of behavior of this church. Moscow's long-term external influence on the uh, Ukrainian Orthodox Church, uh, uh, since it was part of the rock uh, for several centuries, showed a signed internal uh, exclusivist policy of, of its leaders, reluctance to dialogue not only with another branch of the Ukrainian Orthodoxy, but also with Constantinople, led this largest Christian denomination in Ukraine to opposition and closure and the war only intensified this movement. State sanctions against uh, odious leaders and collaborators from the top of the, of the church have seriously damaged the already weak reputation of this religion denomination among the Ukrainian society. Since the beginning of the Russian full-scale aggression against Ukraine in 2022, the Ukrainian churches have very clearly diagnosed the, uh, these events, condemning the Russian military aggression uh, of an independent state. Ukrainian Christians, uh, with their prayers, military and hospital, uh, hospital chaplain service, the charitable activities in society stood on the defense uh, of the country, actively engaged in a variety of work to be close to those who suffer and to help those in need. Churches and church-related organizations played a significant role in the humanitarian work and with their pastoral work continue to heal the wounds of the war. The military events after the February 22 posed serious challenges for Ukrainian Orthodox Church of uh, Moscow Patriarchate. A powerful movement from below, which advocated separation from Moscow, was clearly manifested in the position uh, of, this, uh, of uh, uh, UOC clergy. A significant number of the priests refused to commemorate Patriarch Kirill as a superior during, uh, their, religious, uh, during their religious services. The state also began to pressure uh, to the UOC to cut off its canonical connection with the Moscow Patriarchate. At the same time, according to Orthodox canons, the UOC uh, can't declare its autocephaly by itself. From, uh, from the other hand, it came into conflict with Constantinople due to, due to the formation of the OCU. And Moscow will certainly not allow its canonical separation from itself. The only way out of this uh, stalemate is to start a sincere dialogue about unification with the uh, Orthodox Church of Ukraine, but instead the rhetoric of blaming uh, is constantly repeating. Uh, I will switch some of my points and I will uh, put a question. Is it possible dialogue in time of war? Uh, this brutal war brought terrible suffering uh, and destruction to the Ukrainian people and our land. The continuous open Russian aggression against Ukraine nation, which has a, a genocidal character, makes dialogue between the conflicting parties, aggressor and a victim, impossible. The colonial imperialistic thinking of the Russian leaders, which started and justified this military tragedy, is one of the biggest obstacles to at least begin dreaming about the ending the war or starting a dialogue with Russia or with its religious and ideological representative, the Russian Orthodox Church. Nevertheless, dialogue and uh, bridging the gaps is possible inside Ukraine, as well as with extra uh, uh, international world centers or communities that are ready to listen and communicate. Also, Ukrainian society is polarized because of the war, the need for uh, internal dialogue and the request for unity definitely exist. Unfortunately, dialogue like uh, other Christian values such as peace and forgiveness have often been consciously instrumentalized over the years to promote propaganda, especially in various ecumenical world platforms, or to spread some quasi-religious ideologies such as Russian uh, Ruski Mir, 
Sometimes even it was used to install radical other values and meanings. Therefore, the need for dialogue of a new quality is demanded. The very struggle of the Ukrainian people gives them the opportunity to be subjects and not the objects of this dialogue. What could be the main possible traces of dialogue and uh, how we could develop from the contextual approaches and how it could have uh, this universals, uh, universal impulses. We can summarize the main traces by which Eastern Catholics in Ukraine, for example, even the context of war can initiate, push, and develop dialogue with other churches, especially with the Orthodox partners, if they would be open to their suggestions. First of all is uh, rethinking and uh, the theological approach to the topic of war and just peace. Drawing directly from the experience of the Ukrainian people's resistance to this unjust aggression by Russia. The first fruits of such reflections appeared early in 2017, a document jointly elaborated by and adopted within the framework of the All Ukrainian Council and, uh, uh, of Churches and Religious Organization. And this document was called Ukraine is Our Common Home where there was an attempt to prescribe the strategy of religious organization in their peacemaking initiatives. Today, we need to develop and update this approach in such a way as to strengthen the prophetic voice of the churches, which must sound in unison at this crucial moment of history, clearly articulating the most important things, supporting the resilience of society in the fight against cruelty and evil, rethinking the foundation of lasting peace built on justice and solidarity. Uh, five, five moments, okay. Uh, another big topic uh, uh, that have a promising, uh, a promising topic is uh, uh, elaborating of joint calendar reform, including Paschalia, as you know, that uh, uh, Greek Catholics to, uh, and also Orthodox Church of Ukraine adopted uh, calendar, uh, but uh, it didn't adopt it a new Paschalia. So I think this is especially uh, before uh, commemorating 1,700 years of uh, commemorating of the first uh, uh, ecumenical council, this issue will arise not only in Ukraine, but uh, in the world Christianity. Another thing we should think to, uh, together about joint recognition of baptism made within uh, uh, Greek, uh, Eastern Catholics and Orthodox, and also with Protestants. Uh, uh, work on joint translation and implementation into our communities, the liturgical text. Uh, there are a lot of work ahead, and uh, joint translation of the liturgical text would be a very strong site, uh, site of, uh, 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 in our way to, uh, to unity. Beginning uh, of the official theological dialogue, because in Ukraine we don't have a, an official theological dialogue yet, it is necessary to create a common contextual theology which will, uh, which will also have a global impact. For a, a good example for me is the case of Christians in the Middle East uh, who developed their text uh, in the midst of Middle East Ecumenical Council, the text called We Choose Abundant Life. Uh, also, cooperation between spiritual, educational, uh, and training institutions, such as seminaries, uh, development of joint programs. Our institute has uh, a certain ex uh, experience in establishing cooperation between uh, the seminaries belonging to different uh, denominations, and we see a, a future of such uh, cooperation between the seminaries. Uh, we should elaborate a common concept of the development of big ancient monastery Slavras in Ukraine. <clears throat> For example, Kiev monastery Slavras and, uh, Pochayo, uh, and Pochayo. It is necessary that such a significant places cease to be a place of religious exclusivism and intolerance as it was until recently. But instead, uh, they, these centers could become ecumenical, visionary, and conceptual con uh, centers that would propose constructive messages from the churches, uh, from the churches to, the, to society. Introduction to various, uh, of various reconciliation initiatives, 
uh, inter-church and inter-ethnic within the countries uh, very demanded. For example, a good example of the initiatives of uh, Beatitude uh, Lubomir Huzar and Cardinal Miroslav uh, uh, Marian uh, Jaworski <coughs> that they did in early 2000. Writing a shared historical narratives uh, so that we can rethink and overcome the shadow of the past and open up uh, to new relationships. Since the task of the church is to, uh, to be close to those who suffer in order to serve and to give hope, therefore Ukrainian churches should continue to develop joint programs of military, medical, social chaplaincy, various pastoral programs for individuals and communities to heal the wounds of the current war. Development of joint uh, training programs for families is also demanded. And the last one, uh, Ukrainian churches are sometimes too structured, structured and clericalized, and therefore drawing inspiration from recently happened uh, the Catholic Old Church consultation and rethinking regarding synodality, mm -hmm. and is important for the life of the church. Uh, thus, Eastern Catholics can share this, this synodal experience with other Christians in Ukraine. For sure, it could uh, re revive the dialogue between confessions by involving the widest layers of the faithful, educational institutions, and people of goodwill. And my uh, short concluding remarks. Also, Eastern uh, Catholics in Ukraine uh, uh, in Ukrainian society make up only 10% of all believers. They can fulfill their task when uh, they are an active minority that can produce new ideas or models of unity to form uh, authoritative leaders, in particular in the field of peace building and reconciliation, and creatively approach the issue of dialogue. Today, the attention of the world community is focused on the Ukrainian context, on the unique experience of facing war, pain and suffering, and at the same time, tireless resilience, struggle for freedom and dignity. This experience, being local, already has a global impact and forces world, world leaders, both religious and political, to rethink the foundation of a new and more just world order, to create new approaches in fostering peace and to look for such methods of communication and dialogue which will be based on the principle of truth and human dignity. War brings tremendous tragedy and challenges, but it doesn't take away from us the opportunity to act as a res response to the uh, gospel, to be the salt of the world. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Thank you very much, Dr. Filas, for your uh, for your insights and for your also visionary approach to the topic. I suggest, since we are uh, behind schedule, to proceed immediately to the second uh, presentation and we will collect uh, questions at the end of this session. So it's my pleasure to introduce you a very